Well, today, Team Encore and all the people watching, we have a very special new segment. It's actually going to be our first fan feature, and today's guest is very special. Justice Bex has been Encore's probably biggest fan, and I would have to say he was probably the first fan. Uh, he was, eight years ago, one of the first people that reached out and just fell in love with the company and started, you know, promoting us nonstop. I mean, I think it was either the first or second year he had his wife bake cookies over Christmas and send them to me. I've been waiting every Christmas since, so I'm expecting next oh, Christmas work cookies. Yeah. But um, I just want to give him a warm, warm introduction. This is going to be a really fun segment because he has become part of the uh, the family here, even though we don't live in the same states. Um, you know, just we've appreciated his support. So we wanted to get a little bit uh, more, you know, better to know him and, and just find out his personal history, um, his history with Encore. And so without further ado, Justice, welcome. Um, you know, feel free, give us a little short introduction. Where'd you grow up? Where do you live? Uh, what do you do? Well, hello. I, uh, yeah, grew up in uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Um, lived there for a while. We moved to Arizona probably about 21 years ago to avoid the, the cold and the gloomy weather of Wisconsin. So <laughs> been been loving Arizona ever since. So, but you're a Packers fan. I know that because I see you yes, talking sir. about them. And what I what I do appreciate <laughs> is that you are always showing my Bills some love, whether they deserved it over the last eight years or not. I think this past year, finally, when you're like, hey, great game, I'm like, you know what it was. Finally, it was a great game by the Bills. So, uh, Green Bay, <laughs> yeah. well, man, they can both relate to the cold. I, I always found it funny that, you know, you live in Arizona, and I didn't know, you know, that you had grown up there until I'd asked years ago. I'm like, ah, that makes sense why he's a Packers fan. Um, oh, yeah. So, I'm wondering, do you get up there for, for games at all ever? Yeah, we uh, had a chance probably, I think it was two years ago, but, you know, it was sold out. There wasn't one empty seat at all in the stadium. So yep. we just ended up watching it on TV, and, yeah, it was just as good, I guess. Yeah, cool. Well, that's awesome. Um, so, and what, what do you do? Tell everybody what you do. I, uh, I chemical truck drive to all the dairies throughout Arizona. Okay. And um, there's a salesperson that goes out and, He'll see like, well, the dairy needs like so much soap, so much chlorine, um, you know, right down the gallons. And I'll go out like the following week and I'll fill up, you know, probably at least 10 or 12 different dairies of different gallons of product in the, the chemical truck. So that's, that's awesome. pretty, much, pretty much 12 hours a day. Yeah, I know you're a hard worker, and uh, you know we were chatting before we started the interview, and um, I was asking if you, you know, you were still able to get work, and uh, obviously yeah. considered essential. So that's that's really great news yeah. to, to know that you and uh, your family are, you know, you're able to still continue providing for them and everything like that. So yeah, kind of getting into that, um, I mean, I know a little bit more about your family's story and everything, and I think it's it's a beautiful one. Um, so first, why don't you tell us about uh you know where you met your wife what her name is i know you guys are what this is 21 22 years because you october yeah. 17th 98 you got married right yes sir yep yeah, that's right yeah i met her in wisconsin and um we got our first apartment and then we got our first house and just fell in love with uh owning a house and then finally um uh, a job opportunity came up in Arizona. So like a year later, we moved to Arizona and just uh, fell in love with Arizona ever since. That's awesome. And, um, we've been going through like the foster care system right now. We're both uh, foster parents and we both um, do like online classes, the CPR classes we have to go to and basically just um, – doing everything to our house to get an inspection for uh for you know the foster care people to come in and inspect it and we have meetings and right now we're going on about six months right now with our first foster son so and we're gonna adopt him pretty soon so 
I'm just waiting for this whole court thing to resolve and this uh, virus thing to resolve. I mean, yep, that's amazing. Um, you know, you have was is it four kids, three kids? Yeah, yeah, we have four kids now. Uh, two of them are biological. Um, one is biologically ours, and yep. two are two we adopted from uh, Taipei, uh, Taiwan. Uh huh. And uh, one boy, one girl. And uh, those are both, um, yeah, adopted. And uh, our foster son will be adopted soon. As soon as we get the, the court orders and stuff like that in place. And, and, where, and where is the foster son from? He's from uh, Arizona. Okay, cool. Well, yeah. that's, you guys are a regular modern family. Yeah. I don't know if you ever watched that show, but I mean, I, I love stories like this. Uh, you know, I think yeah. it's so important, um, you know, to, to embrace the diversity and, you know, you guys are obviously just, mm -hmm. you have big hearts and that's all that yeah. you, all you care about. So I think it's really, really amazing. You guys have a really uh, beautiful story and beautiful family. So that's, I appreciate you sharing that with us. I, I wanted to get a little bit into that because I, I always had a lot of respect for, for you guys um and uh thought it was just a really neat neat part about you so mm -hmm. all right we're gonna kind of get some advice from you you do have a big family uh well for one i'm hoping that the quarantine has strengthened your marriage and not dissolved it uh, oh yeah very, but, very much yep good good um but what what kind of uh things are you and your family doing to you know stay sane to stay entertained do you have any any fun recommend any games that you recommend anything at all? I know there are a lot of people out there that are probably like, Oh, what do I do now? <laughs> yeah. We've been doing like uh monopoly candy land, yep. putting puzzles together, trying to right. limit their uh, electronic usage, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's difficult sometimes, but they've been listening. That's great. I mean, it's gotta be a, a phenomenal yeah. way. And you know, the silver lining in all this is how we have rediscovered how to connect. And it's, it's kind of fascinating when you think about it, that we are forced to be apart from so many people yet we're probably more connected with everybody than ever before. You know, yeah. I, whether it's FaceTiming with people that you haven't talked to in years or FaceTiming with friends, that you just don't see as much anymore because you know yeah, things get in the way, um, and it's like, well, if I don't have time to go out and meet them in person, then you know, before the pandemic, then are you really going to set up a, a FaceTime, you know, meeting with them and uh, you know, FaceTime happy hour, all those things? So it has mm -hmm. been really interesting to see. Um, I mean, I think I used FaceTime maybe twice in my life prior yeah. uh, to the whole situation, and now it's just a way of life. It's like, all right, well, you know, I've got a couple of friends that are going to be performing at five. So it's a hey, little five o'clock, you know, uh, musical happy hour that we'll watch. And there's, yep. hey, it's just incredible. So, um, yeah, all really our meetings fun. now are all online. Oh yeah. Yep. All the foster meetings that we have now, they're all online. Yep. Well, for Encore, I mean, we have all our meetings on zoom. Uh, and you know, so there's like, eight of us and it looks like the Brady Bunch opening every morning when we have our morning meetings, you know, right before this interview yeah. was, was our 10 AM. And, uh, you're like, I'm not there with them, but this is what it would be like if we were in the office. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I had to go into the office the other day and I was just like, Oh, I've never wanted to go back to the office so badly. Um, just for a change <laughs> of scenery, but all right. So now we're going to dive into kind of your love of golf and of encore in general. So, first question I had was how long have you been golfing and what was, you know, what, what got you into it to start? Well, I would say it was probably when I entered high school, I would uh, take my dad, my dad's clubs and I would tee up a golf ball into the, the neighbor's field and almost hit his house. I would say within like maybe 50 yards, and it was yeah. total like, like 350 yards to his house and I was almost hitting his house and that like kind of like what got me like addicted and uh I joined the high school team and uh I was hooked ever since you know making varsity letters and awards and most birdies in one year and that's that's what got me hooked in high school and ever since awesome. I've been hooked 
That's great. So who was, who was the guy that uh, you watched growing up? Like who was your player when you were growing up that you really, you know, that was the one you wanted to watch every, every time a tournament was on. Oh, back then probably uh, Arnold Palmer. Cause he uh, almost has the same swing as my dad. So wow, he's got a kind of like that short, like swing and kind of fall through and yep. Really cool. Make a video to link to both. <laughs> uh, that's that's pretty cool. What's your what would you say your favorite memory on the golf course has been? Was it you know a time that you played with your dad? Was it uh, a hole in one that you got? Is it have you played with your kids? Like what's right now to this state? What's your favorite memory on a golf course? For favorite memory is probably taking my son. He was probably three, and my dad came down. He flew down here from Wisconsin. And we played golf, and that was a very uh, memorable time, I remember, because my son at three, and he was all excited, and he got snacks, and we got stuff off the golf cart, and he was all he was all into it. So Yeah. Well, and that was probably just yeah. extremely exciting for you to, you know, yeah. you're hoping that he's going to enjoy it, you know, because yep. I'm sure you're, you're envisioning, man, this could be a life a lifelong uh, connection that we can share, something that we can enjoy yep. together. Uh, that's what's great about golf. I mean, you can pretty much do it your whole life, uh, you know, barring some injury or whatever. But that must have been a really cool moment for you. I can I can understand why seeing that he was going to share some sort of passion in this, uh, you know, along with yourself would be really fun yeah. to, to know. Um, all right. So you have always posted a bunch of videos, and I think some are yours <laughs> and some are others, about a rubber snake that rubber snake <laughs> yep. prank, I think it's called hiss a lot and uh, yep. so for one I don't know the backstory of that is that something that was already created or, or did you start these videos or did you just get one once you saw them and you're like I got to pull this prank on some friends because if people haven't seen it they are hysterical I mean especially in Arizona <laughs> coming across a rattlesnake on a course oh, it's like is, all the time yeah probably happens all the time and yep. people and justice included because he's sick in the head, will set up the snake <laughs> around the cart. And when one of the players comes and they see it and they just jump out of their shorts, you know, because they're yes, thinking they it's all coiled up, ready to strike. And it's like, oh, man. <laughs> so can you give us a history of that? And what's what do you think is the best, best one you pulled off? Like what was the, the best or, I guess, slash worst reaction you had to it? Um, well, it all started probably – I would say at least 10 years ago, if not a little, little bit more. But one guy, he sent me a rubber snake in the mail, and he was the one that started his lot. And um, I just started pranking people as much as I could and get the <laughs> camera all secretly recording. And I had one that he got so mad, he almost broke his driver over the snake. And <laughs> oh, people mad at you? And, What's that? He was mad at you, or yeah, he was mad, mad at, at me. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> uh. you know? And I don't want to get too many. I got one cart lady. She came up, and you know, she was kind of older, and she almost started grabbing her chest like she was gonna have a heart attack. I'm like, oh, oh, <laughs> that would not have been good. You're, yeah, that would have been a prank no. gone wrong. Oh man. Yeah, that would have been bad. <laughs> yep. Well, I enjoy it, so keep them coming. Just make sure that the person you're pranking has uh, no irregular heartbeats <laughs> going right. on. Yep. Um, physical fit condition. <laughs> right, exactly. All right, so we're going to get into your history with Encore. Um, so for maybe newer members of Team Encore that don't know what our first ball was, it was a ball with a hollow metal core. Uh, so that was the a – golf ball. Even before that, actually, the Omen. The Omen, yep. But it, that was for a very short time, and then we named it the Evo after making some changes. So do you remember yeah. how you even came across it? Was it, was it on Facebook? Uh, like, what, what, what did you think when you first saw a ball that had a hollow metal core? And, you know, because I remember, I mean, you reaching out being like, this is crazy. What's going on? Yeah. I got to try these. Yep. You know? So tell us that story. Yeah, it was a long time ago. I just uh, saw you on Facebook, and there's a hollow metal core. It's got a hollow center, and 
a piece of a steel ball in the middle of a golf ball. Yeah. And people just didn't believe me. And it was <laughs> guaranteed to go straight and fell in love ever since. And well, what I love is, you know, that ball was not made for good golfers. And you are a good golfer. It's not yep. made for high swing speeds. And you got a high swing speed. You know, yep. at that time, that was the only ball we had. It was, it was such a unique and differentiated product. It was the only way we felt we'd be able to actually make some noise in the golf ball industry because Just that be is literally it. one of the hardest industries to penetrate because it's dominated mm -hmm. by, you know, five, six multi-billion dollar companies and they don't oh. allow new technology in very mm -hmm. often. Um, and so it was great that you, you liked it. But I, I remember, I mean, because you're – You've always been so enthusiastic for your your um, you know your love of encore of everything encore, and I just remember all the people, all your buddies that would you know troll you on the page and be like, "What is this? This is bull. Yeah, this is illegal." And you're like, at, "Well, for two years while we were fighting, it was it was conforming, but not on the conforming list. You know, it met all the yes. metrics, but then when it became conforming, I remember you being like." look on the conforming list. That thing is allowed to, you know, permissible and this and that. Uh, but then exactly. uh, we smartened up and said, all right, we got to make a full suite of golf balls. And, you know, we, we kept the innovation, but, but made some new ones. Mm -hmm. I know you've been playing the, um, the elixir for a elixir. long time. And, uh, you know, when you, I'm sure you still have people that are new that you, maybe you just meet and they say, Hey, what's that ball? A lot of people don't understand that just because, you know, a company isn't one of the big brand names, you know, doesn't mean that they can't make a quality golf ball. So how do you usually explain or describe the elixir to somebody? And, you know, what kind of reaction do you usually get? Do you get them to try it? Do they, uh, do they have the same reaction as you? And, and uh, I'm just kind of curious what your pitch to them is like, how do you say, trust me, just, you know, give it a, give it a go. Yeah. That, that's what happened last time I went golfing. I gave uh, somebody I know, a dozen golf balls. He got to second tee, and I think the ball on a par three, he almost hit the pin. Mm. You know, that was like five shots in. Or no, he made a birdie on the first hole. Then the second hole was a par three. He almost made a hole in one with the elixir golf ball. So I just told him, just trust me on this golf ball and, you know, 85 compression, and it's the best yep. ball, golf ball you'll ever use. And then He's a believer after his second hole, so. That's awesome. And you can tell him we just announced today because we found out just like we ended the last decade with the Elixir taking gold on the Golf Digest hot list, we started this decade uh, a repeat. So it, it is gold that, yeah. on, the, on the hot list, which is awesome. Um, and we have a new ball that we're coming out with, but I'll, I'll tell you about that uh, toward the end here. Uh, what, is, what is your best – story whether it's lowest score um a hole in one like what's your what's your favorite i guess golf uh accomplishment with an encore ball for you Whew, there's so many of them ah <laughs> they're good yeah, i like that i, I swear <laughs> i didn't pay you to tell you that <laughs> oh man um it had to been there was a long drive hole and i think i hit it almost 360 yards and no one even came close and I think I won a hundred bucks cash and a four foursome for the following day whenever I wanted to wanted to play again so I was the only person that came close to that yardage so that's awesome that, that would make me really pump so pretty cool all right well we are going to do a game called this or that so i'm just gonna rattle off a few things you're gonna off the top of your head pick all right so matt green yellow or white elixir i love the i love the matt green it yeah. has that distinctive color mm -hmm. uh sunrise or sunset golf oh well i would say sunrise because you know, we're getting into the triple digit heats here now, so. <laughs> so now it's strategic. Now, now is the chance to get out for 20 bucks in yep. the summertime, so. Awesome. No one else yeah. wants to play. That, that heat, I, I can't even imagine. Good for you. Um, 
U.S. Open <laughs> or Ryder Cup? Um, I would say U.S. Open. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. This is I'll, – I'll be interested. First Tiger Woods Masters win or his latest Masters win, which was more special, do you think? Oh. Top, I right? would say <laughs> the latest one because he had his kids with him. Mm. And the last one because he had his dad with him. So it's like a toss-up. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Brian Brothers or Tanya Tear? I would say Tanya, yeah, yeah. There you go. And she's an yeah. on good, encore. Good um, trick shot artist, yep. Yep. Hole in one or albatross? Which would you rather? Ooh. Well, since I had an albatross, it was uh, 530 yards, par oh. five. I hit it. I hit a good drive and the second shot with my three wood and it, we couldn't find my ball anywhere. One guy goes, hey, look in the cup. I look in the cup and there it was. Unbelievable. So, I would love I, to get a hole in one next. Yeah, that's pretty cool, man. Uh, yeah. All right. Last one. <clears throat> to play with your dad or to play with your kids? I would say play with my dad. Because he's like 80, I want to say 85 right now. And I don't, I don't know how much time we got left, but, you know, he's going pretty strong. He's pretty fit for being in his age. And he golfs almost, I would say, four times a week. So Awesome. I got all the time to play with my kids, I guess. Yeah. Great answers. All right. Well, that's going to wrap this up. Um, I do want to mention, uh, well, first off, thank you from all of us yeah. here for eight plus years of uh, super fandom um, for all your support. Uh, we're going to send you a little um, goodie bag of, of stuff, but along with the elixir that we're going to send you, uh, I'm going to send you, you'll be the first non-professional, the first fan that is going to do review and test the Vero X1, which we will be doing a pre-launch uh, in the next few weeks, and we'll be selling and officially launching on the website uh, probably toward the end of May. But we're okay. going to send some of those out to you, so you'll be the first one that, to prime and test them out. And they are uh, – you think the Elixir is good? Wait till you play this thing. It is – And that's um, the, the new four-piece ball then or what? Yep. Yep. All right. So it's got, got a lot of the same um, – innovation as far as uh, high density particles in the perimeter uh, to create okay. some of that play in the wind performance, that mm -hmm. perimeter weighting. Um, there is a fourth layer. The Elixir is a three piece. It's going to be a little stiffer because it's, it's really meant for an even more elite player. Uh, okay. It's getting better spin rates. And so far at almost every swing speed, it's been going seven to 10 yards further um, than okay. almost any ball out there. So we're excited. I uh, hope you're excited. Very Thank excited. you so much for for spending some time to uh, catch up and to chat. It's definitely, yeah. you know, I can't wait till I can be out in Arizona mm -hmm. and we can actually meet in person because I, I think you well, met I Steve, almost met right? you that one time. No, yeah, almost me. You met Steve, management. right? Yeah. Yeah. So we'll, we'll do it. But this has been great and all my best uh, and love to you and your family. And we Thank will you. chat you soon. Too.